Thank you so much. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you uh, to Mr. Zahur for the kind uh, introduction. And I'm very glad to be joined this evening by Ms. Naz, Naz Baluch, uh, the Parliamentary Secretary uh, at the Ministry of Climate Change, uh, and my colleague Elizabeth Horst, the Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary at the State Department's Bureau of South and Central Asian Affairs. As we gather this evening, uh, I want to first express my deep condolences to the people of Pakistan for the shocking devastation caused by the flooding. We are deeply saddened for the victims and the loss of loved ones and livelihoods and, and homes throughout Pakistan. Uh, over the past few weeks, we've seen the government, institutions, and the people of the United States respond to the support respond to support the people of Pakistan. U.S. companies have collectively donated millions of dollars in humanitarian assistance while also providing food and other urgently needed supplies to those in need. Uh, everyday American citizens have been donating to charities and leading fundraisers to assist families, friends, and perfect strangers. On the government side, we've seen members of the U.S. Congress visit flood-affected areas as well as senior leaders from the Department of State, the Department of Defense, uh, the White House, and the administrator uh, and administrator power powers of the U.S. Agency for International Development. She was in Pakistan last week to observe the impacts of the floods, see firsthand the ongoing U.S. efforts to support the people of Pakistan, and to meet with Pakistani counterparts to discuss ways the United States can help in both the short and the long term. The United States has provided $53.1 million in humanitarian assistance uh, with $50.1 million for emergency flood relief since August 12th, along with $3 million in resilience programming uh, to bolster disaster resilience. Uh, as, part of, as part of that assistance, last week we saw the United States Central Command in support of USAID begin airlifting humanitarian supplies to the people of Pakistan. Uh, and this uh, airlift, which will continue through this week, uh, includes essential life support services, including food preparation and shelter materials, um, which is coming in, in, in 20 separate shipments. Um, just as the COVID-19 pandemic has had a disproportionate impact on women's participation in the workforce, as we just heard, the catastrophic flooding is also a reminder that women and girls are, the most, are among the most vulnerable during a humanitarian crisis like this. And as we continue to support relief efforts with local partners and Pakistani authorities, we'll be looking closely at how to address the unique impacts of the crisis on women and girls. I want to acknowledge that US PwC corporate members, including S&P Global, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola and the Resource Group are also pledging support uh, directly for the victims of flooding. Uh, before I turn the floor over to Elizabeth Horst to speak about the Council's broader goals with the Future of Women and Work Initiative, let me underscore the importance the United States places on empowering women in the economy and supporting gender equality in Pakistan. We do this through the council, as well as a range of other initiatives. We see the advancement of gender equality and women's empowerment as a cross-cutting theme in all of our engagement and assistance activities in Pakistan, from health to education, to energy, agriculture, and entrepreneurship. U.S. programs, U.S. assistance through programs like the Small and Medium Enterprise Activity has helped train and finance more than 50,000 women entrepreneurs and created more than 32,000 full-time jobs for women in Pakistan. Uh, just last month, one of the women entrepreneurs of the embassy-funded accelerator program for women entrepreneurs raised a half a million dollars from an American venture capital firm for her startup and qualified to participate in the Startup World Cup and pitch for a $1 million investment prize in Silicon Valley. Uh, looking forward, going forward, we're developing a new program that will entirely focus on promoting women's economic empowerment. 
Through this program, we hope to enable women-led businesses to play an important role in spurring economic growth and creating a more stable, prosperous society in Pakistan. In addition, we'll be launching a loan guarantee facility in collaboration with the U.S. International Development Finance Corporation. This program will mobilize local currency, local currency lending to qualified micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, which are majority owned, operated, or staffed by women across various sectors in Pakistan. Finally, I would underscore that enabling women's economic empowerment in Pakistan can help facilitate and expand already robust trade and investment flows between our two countries. This further strengthens our partnership in a year in which we celebrate 75 years of diplomatic relations. The United States remains Pakistan's top destination uh, for exports and one of Pakistan's largest sources of foreign direct investment. U.S. investment has been up 50% last year and is now the highest it's been in over a decade. I'll conclude by thanking S&P Global, Texas A&M University, and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's U.S.-Pakistan Business Council. This initiative would not have been possible without their support. I look forward to the conversation and increased investments this initiative will foster and to further collaboration in support of the Council's efforts to accelerate women's workforce participation entrepreneurship, and access to educational opportunities across Pakistan. Thank you, and I'd, um, I think, I'd like to turn it over now to my colleague.